The importance of faith to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Hi, welcome to today's little lesson. and Thank you so very much for joining me. All of our regular viewers know that we've been on a, well, it seems like a long series, but it's worth spending time on about speaking in other tongues and the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And in the last two lessons, I've been telling you stories about people whom I've prayed for, <clears throat> who've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, spoken other tongues, and over the years, the, if, I, if I had been counting them, I'm sure it would be at least in the hundreds, maybe in the thousands. And um, it's I, I, I never get tired of it. I never, ever get tired of it. I never get tired of praying in other tongues. Because once you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit and you have initially spoken in tongues, then you find that you can do it anytime you want. The Holy Spirit's always there within you, ready to give you the utterance. And that's thoroughly biblical. You know, on the day of Pentecost, it says that, you know, those 120 that had gathered there in the upper room, it says they began to speak in tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them the utterance. The Holy Spirit doesn't do the talking. No, no sir, no ma'am. You must do the talking, the speaking. It's your mouth, <clears throat> your tongue, your vocal cords, your teeth, whatever you use to speak. Uh, but the Holy Spirit is the one who gives you the utterance to be able to speak in a language that you've never learned. And I mentioned in our last lesson, and this is kind of what I want to <clears throat> develop in this little lesson, the, the, the importance, and, and, and uh, the, the, this is just a fundamental, this is so important, that in order to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have to believe, you have to have faith. If, if you're saying, Lord, if it's your will, please baptize me in the Holy Spirit, can I tell you what's gonna happen? It's his will, but you won't get it, because you doubt, see? You have to have faith. And if you doubt, and if you reveal your doubt by saying, well, Lord, if it's your will, so what you're saying is, well, Lord, I don't know whether you wanna baptize me in the Holy Spirit or not. And so how could you have faith then to be baptized in the Holy Spirit if you're not sure it's God's will for you? All you can do then is hope. But faith, the author of Hebrews said, is the assurance of things hoped for, right? Faith and hope are not the same. Hope always leaves room for the possibility that what you want, you may not get. Faith is assurance. It goes beyond hope. I'm certain that I'm going to receive this. And, and in fact, Jesus took it one step further. He said, whatever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. So Jesus said, we have to get beyond believing we're going to receive it. And we have to believe we receive it when we pray. <clears throat> so I've told you a couple stories about people that I prayed for. In the last lesson, I told you a story about a guy that it, I had to pray for him three times. Not that it took three times for God to finally hear our prayers. <laughs> it took three times before my friend, <clears throat> who I was praying for, to exercise his faith. And had he done that the first time we prayed, we wouldn't have had to pray three times. Okay? There's nothing wrong with praying three times, but just recognize that the first two, if you didn't receive the first two times, it's because you had unbelief. And, and pe people get mad about this. I feel so sorry for those people. You know, I just say it honestly, but with, with compassion. If you get mad about this, that, sh that shows that you, you need to adjust, <laughs> okay? You, you know, it, it, there, there could be a little pride sneaking in there. And, and so we, we need to humble ourselves and, and admit that if it's not working, it's not God's fault. You know, God's perfect. We're, we're not. And, and then the apostles, Jesus' Jesus' closest friends, sometimes they doubted. Remember, Peter doubted. He was walking on the water and, and, and by faith. But when he looked at the wind and the waves, then he doubted. And that's when he began to sink. And Jesus said to him, why did you doubt? I think later on when they got in the boat, put him back in the boat. But notice, Jesus still had mercy on him, but he was still correcting him. 
And when the disciples failed to cast out a demon, Jesus said, oh, this unbelieving and perverse generation, how long am I going to put up with you? <laughs> you know, bring the kid to me, <laughs> you know, because the, the apostles had tried and failed. And one time they prayed, Lord, they asked, Lord, increase our faith. They said, if you had faith like a mustard seed, you could be moving mountains, guys. So, so the, the fault's not up in heaven. <laughs> you know, it faults down here on earth. We need to correct ourselves. Now, you have to believe it's God's will. That's why I'm doing all these lessons. And if you haven't watched them all, if you're just like watching this one, and this is the first one you've watched, well, go back and let your mind be transformed, be, you know, be, by, by the word of God, by all those promises that will build your faith until you get to that place where you can pray with assurance, Lord, I know it's your will for me to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so I pray now, expecting to receive right now. I believe I receive when I pray, not someday, right now. And when you do that, and you act upon your faith, you do something with your mouth and your vocal cords. Doesn't have to be much, but you know, you're gonna have to move them. Now, in the third little lesson that I did on this, I demonstrated speaking in tongues. I'll do it again, just, just for the sake of showing you how I'm the one who's speaking. I'm totally conscious of my mouth moving and making sounds. I don't know what I'm saying, it's the, the utterance, the, the, you know, the language is not coming from my brain. I never learned this language. Uh, it comes out of my spirit. So here goes. Men se trepetikar ala ashutrost, brede le katekere mitis sondroto brava shakatakara elebra horanushka. Breve le lediskar vanda kroto brava shitres pete le katekere mate heradi abaradosto vrat kime shandre. Brozo do trukolo drubi vidiske pranta kalara del del dromo svitke shropa te kara del krapisto koto karamata klar pediske drofra no atala krusto brava datahara. That's speaking in tongues. I don't know what I said. <laughs> I wish I did. And 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 the cool thing is, I know it's not coming out of my brain because, um, for example, I've tested this. I found like if I'm reading a book or let's just say I'm reading the Bible and my wife walks in the room and she starts conversing with me, I, I can't do two things at once. I can't be carrying on a conversation with her and at the same time reading, continuing to read and, 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 and understanding. I got to close the book or put the book down and focus on her. I can't do that. Or for example, I can't read the Bible at the same time recite multiplication tables because my mind can't do those two things at the same time. I've got to either recite the multiplication tables and not be reading and comprehending or vice versa. <clears throat> but I found that I can be reading the Bible and praying in tongues fluently, continually, because I'm not using my mind to speak. I'm using my mind to read and comprehend. Th th this utterance comes from the Holy Spirit out of my spirit. And the beautiful thing about this, or there's so many beautiful things about this, and this is why I want you to have it, I'm, and I'm not ashamed, and I'll never be ashamed, because <clears throat> this is biblical, no matter what any preacher says. Um, the, one of the beautiful things is that it teaches you something about faith. Because when you receive an instant miracle, and all of a sudden you're speaking in a language you've never learned, oh my goodness. One, one person who, who's been watching these videos just wrote to me and said, oh, there's so much, she, she prayed and received. She said, there's so much joy in this. <laughs> and it is, it is wonderful. Um, when you receive a miracle, you realize, oh my goodness, this is how it works. You have to pray with faith. And you know, the Bible's been saying this all along. Jesus said, what, whatever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive. Jesus said in, in Matthew 21, 22, or 23, no, 23, 24, um, it's in there somewhere, you know, everything you ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. I think that's Matthew 21, 22. Everything you ask in prayer, what? Believing you shall receive. So you have to believe. So many times Jesus said to people whom he healed, your faith has healed you. So, you know, and, and so if they wouldn't have had faith, they wouldn't have been healed. I know that's hard for some pr proud people to accept. A lot of preachers don't like to hear anyone say that, but it's the truth. 
And uh, James said, you know, any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men generously and without reproach, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being an unstable man, you know. See, James said, if you don't have faith, you can't expect to receive anything from the Lord. In fact, you won't expect it because you don't have faith. But people that have faith, oh my goodness. God loves it for some reason. Because uh, it's not they're not insulting him. When we don't believe him, it's insulting to God. Because he, he can't lie. Alright, so I said all this to say, before you're going to be baptized in the Spirit, you have to have faith. You have to believe it's God's will. That's why what I found, and this will be a little lesson for all of you who want to help other people receive the Holy Spirit. Ask them two questions before you pray. Do you believe? Well, ask them three questions. Are you a believer in Jesus Christ? Have you been born again? You know, because they have to. That have, you don't want to pray for someone who hasn't been born again. Number two, do you believe it's God's will for you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues? <clears throat> Listen. If they say, "Well, I don't know," don't pray for them. They're not ready. Or if they say, "Well, I I sure hope so," don't pray for them. They're not ready. Only pray for them if they say yes, and and, and without hesitation, yes, because it's in the Bible. And then ask the third question. When I lay my hands upon you, will you speak in tongues? That's the real test. Because if they really believe it, as they just said a second ago, then the answer to the next question is, yes, God keeps his word. <laughs> you know, but if they say, oh, man, I'm really hoping I'll speak in tongues, don't pray for them. Say, oh, you're not ready. you got to get go from hope to faith. So, Soak yourself in all these promises from the Word of God, and and, and when, 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 you know, come back to me when you're ready, when you know, when you believe that you're going to speak in tongues when we pray. And of course, you don't need anyone to lay hands upon you or pray for you. You can go straight to God, but sometimes it helps people to feel like somebody's praying for them, you know, and someone who has confidence. And, and of course, at, at one who's ministering the Holy Spirit can encourage the one who wants to receive the baptism of the Spirit. But your faith is contagious. Faith is contagious. Remember those four guys that load their friend through the roof? The Bible says Jesus looked up and he saw their faith. They were all believers. You know, they were all encouraging their friend, let's get you to Jesus. If we get you to Jesus, you're going to be healed. They all believed. That's I like, I like believing friends, people that encourage me to have faith. So when you ask them those questions and they say yes to all of them, you don't have to wait another second. You can say, in Jesus' name, receive the Holy Spirit and lay your hand upon them, and they'll be speaking in tongues just like that. Because <clears throat> they'll open their mouth. They, they, they'll have so much faith that they'll have so much expectation that they're expecting right then to speak in tongues. And so, of course, they're going to, you know, and boo, I was going to come speaking in tongues. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to get back into the Word of God in our next little lesson, talk more about these things. I think we'll go to Acts chapter 19. And look at another case where believers, thoroughly saved, but they had not yet been baptized in the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and they got baptized in the Holy Spirit. All right. Uh, if you've never been to davidservant.org or davidservant.com, please check us out and see, uh, look at all the wonderful resources we have there for your spiritual growth. Until next time, may the Lord bless you.